Is this camera too low? Welcome back to stage five. Stage five, as you know, if you watched the last video, is all about installing laminate flooring. There are many different ways how to install laminate flooring. The one most important way is always go by your instructions which come with the laminate. For example, like here, these are some easy to follow, pretty diagrams and pictures. Some of them may apply, some may not. For example, I think this one's actually based on real wood material. For example, it's saying like always around the edge of the perimeter, i.e. next to your skeleton, leave a 10 mil gap for the expansion of the wood. Before you install the wood, don't go straight down the road, get the wood and then just whack it in. Leave it for a couple of days to climatize to the environment, i.e. to the temperature of your house. Always follow the instructions that come with the flooring. One of the key tricks about installing the laminate flooring is no more underlay to install. What I mean by underlay is there are a couple of types. There's a thin polystyrene foam that comes in a roll which you'll lay out. That's quite good if you've got floorboards and you don't have to worry too much about, about insulation purposes. However, this is a modern building so it's already got the insulation installed within the concrete. But nonetheless, I always use this. It's green, it's about 5mm thick. Um, I don't know the don't exact name of it, but this is the other option you get a laminate. When you do lay them down, don't stick your, your next one next to it because then you've got two straight edges. What you want to try and do, if you can, is cut one in half and then start that half there. So then your next one will be almost like, but your length of your room will determine that anyway. Because obviously to save wastage, you use your off cut to start the next row and so forth and so forth. You use your off cut and you'll start the next row continually. So that's what I'm going to do now, is cut my small section here and get that installed. Right, okay, as you can see we've got a section of the floor and laid, not all of it laid, pointless laying all of it because you dare end up tripping over it. Just lay what you need for the time being, then once you've done the flooring, then you slowly move onwards. So now it's time to lay the flooring. The one which I've got is known as click and clack. You put them in at an angle and then they hold themselves into place. I won't click this into place because I won't be able to get that part easily. Nonetheless, it clicks into place. That actually makes it a lot stronger. It doesn't pull itself apart. So have you ever seen the flooring where you see all the gaps in between the joints? Well, in theory, this shouldn't do it, not unless it's been installed incorrectly. This type of flooring is a little bit trickier to install because of that purpose. There's two different methods. The first method is move your floor up to the skirt board where you need it, leaving your gap around the edge for expansion, because it's, even though it's MDF, it still expands. And then you put your edging strip around the whole perimeter. It is easy to do that way. In my opinion, it's not the nicest way. I, I personally believe that it makes the floor look cheap and it makes the floor stand out that is not actually real wood. So for that purpose alone, it's the reason why I like doing it this way, move it up to the the edge using the back of the board, not the surface side, obviously, and then removing the section of the skirting. Yes, that is a long approach, ideally you put the floor down and then the skirting, but I've done it this way to show you guys an alternative way how to lay it properly with the skirting already established. So without further ado, I'm going to now show you what I mean by removing the section of the skirting. Right, so this is the tool. Why oh, is this switched on? It's not switched on. Good. Right, so this is a tool. It's not, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not the fastest of all tool. It is not saying that like, and it's done. It's more like, well, you get the gist of it when you see it. But this is what I'm gonna do. I've married my underside, most importantly, the underside, not top side, the underside. I cannot stress that enough. So the underside is facing up. Get that along there. Cuts it all off. You remove the off, uh, the off cut, boom. Slide in. Perfect. Anyway, ear defenders. <clears throat> Tall. Oh, it's noisy. <laughs> now that I've got the material out of the way, that can just slide under there nicely. Now that looks nice, clean, and finished. 
better than having that whole beading around. But it's important to note, even though we have removed this excess material out, it doesn't mean we want to replace that removed material with the flooring. Ideally, we want it ever so slightly under, only literally a fraction, couple mil, because that material that we remove will be our expanse. That's why it's important not to go all the way under, only partially under. So now we've actually made our gaps under the skirting. The next stage is to know what size to cut the ball. My gap in here is 94 centimetres. So ideally, we want to go just a little bit bigger than that, not much, not much, five mil either side. So this gap is 94 centimetres. We want to be cutting our boards here at 95 centimetres. Once you've actually measured out the length that you want, pencil mark and obviously cut it. There's your off cut, disregard. That's now the actual length that you want to go into the void which is measured. But instead of wasting this piece, what I recommend is that you get a new piece, attach your off cut onto that new piece like so, get your first piece you just cut, place that on top, and then pencil mark a line there for you to cut off later. Right, so now that we've got our pieces cut, this is the important part. I personally find having your female section exposed into the room rather than the male section. The reason being is when you lay it on the floor, when you get your new piece, you will place it on top, tilt at an angle, give a bit of a wiggle as you put it down, and it's installed. If you had to do the other way, you can imagine it could be awkward. Nonetheless, that's done, and then we'll slide that first piece in. So now we're going to get our other off cut. Pull the flooring forward a little bit. If you can't do that, quite simply, block the flooring anywhere and use this board as a lever. It will help you pull it out. Now what you want to do is marry the new backboard, which goes under the skirting, level with the other backboards. Line that in place, you get another piece, new piece, make sure it's the right way, and line that up there. It doesn't have to be touching the wall with the rest because it's just a guideline, a template to help us find the measurements for this piece. So because we know this is where we want that, we know this is where this is going to go because it's quite a fair bit locked into there. We can actually find out that the measurement there is six and a half centimetres. We can move back here and see that is also six and a half centimetres. So we know what we've got to measure to fill, fill this gap in has to be bigger than six and a half centimetres. Bear in mind, we want five mil to go underneath. So six and a half, we want to aim for seven. Again here, this is 24 centimetres. We want to aim for 24.5 ideally, but not 25, because we still have a little bit of lenience there. So that's what I'm going to now cut, is the piece to fit into there. Right, so here's my piece. We also have to pull this form forward, not all the way. There's this piece you have to then slide into the female part of the board, and then flip down like so. At that point, you're going to move it back, like that. What we'll now do is place a couple of pieces here, because we've now got to work on the other side. And we'll need these lengths to make sure what we're going to cut stays square. Before we flip the other side, what you may find with this flip and flap is that once it's in place, it doesn't move back to the forwards. So when it comes to getting your floor in, under your skirting, you can't. You can't slide unless you move the whole entire floor over, which is obviously not a good idea. But what you need to do is the part that's going to click into the female part, i.e. the male part, there's a little ledge. What you need to do is take that ledge off. See, ledge has now been removed. Don't panic about removing this. Technically, all you're doing is just converting this back into the standard laminate. It will not come apart because you've still got the top lip, which will hold it in place. But that does mean you can now slide it.
Right, I've just realised I've come all this way and I haven't actually shown you guys how not to lay laminate floor in. Truth to be told, it did kind of slip my mind because I didn't actually realise the audio was not recorded. So I had to pull all the floor back up again and read the video again. So I was a bit disappointed, but nonetheless, we're here now. And this is how you should not lay laminate floor in. You should have put it directly on a solid surface. Always put on something which is designed to cushion it. Never lay flooring like this. I've left the gap so you guys can see. Put all the joints in line one another. What will actually happen, will, the floor will literally move and buckle and start breaking itself apart. So if you can, when you can, obviously build it like the way I have been. What you need, you want to build it like that because then your weak point is always interrupted by a solid board and therefore it won't break apart. But most importantly, if you have got a really unlevel floor, is to level the floor. All we have to do is run around the perimeter with some cork. The reason why I'm using cork is because it covers all those tiny little gaps. Plus, once you actually apply the cork on and wipe it down with your finger, you can use a cloth just to wipe off the excess. So that's what we're going to do now. Ah. Wow, what a difference. Just from having the gap and having it filled in, I personally would say that's absolutely flawless. <laughs> I think it. It just goes to show the tiniest little touches make the biggest difference. I mean, just imagine having that edging strip all the way around there, which first of all is an increase in cost, but just by simply filling it in with cool, give it a nice coat of paint, it absolutely looks perfect. As I said, flawless. Sorry to use that direct twice. So if you like that video, uh, please leave a comment if you wish to. That'd be great to have some feedback. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.